G'day everyone, welcome to another episode of Python for LEGO Robotics. Today we're going to look at advanced line following code. G'day everyone, my name is Gary. Line following for a robot is one of the most important functions in order to perform accurate navigation. And it is one of the most crucial skills to learn when studying robotics. I did this tutorial a few months back where I go through the basics of proportional line following using Python. And I got a lot of questions, namely, how do I stop my robot from following the line? Well, today you're in luck because today I'm not going to show you one method. I'm going to show you three ways to stop your robot in doing what I call a limited line follow. Before I get started, I recommend that you build uh, the robot Tricky for the Mindstorms Robot Inventor or the Driving Base 2 robot from Lego Spike Prime. In a moment, I'm going to demonstrate how to code a function so that your robot can follow a line for a fixed number of seconds. After that, I'm going to show you how to follow a line for a fixed number of wheel rotations. And lastly, I'll show you how to follow a line until you encounter an obstacle using a distance sensor. I spent a lot of time experimenting and putting these videos together. So if you find them helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more in the future. Let's get started. So here we have the code for my uh, original line following. And uh, all we're doing is we're defining the hub, setting the motor pair to B and A, and the color sensor at E. And obviously, this is for the Mindstorms robot inventor. So if you're using Spike Prime, you'll have to adjust your port settings uh, right at this part here. After that, we make a beep, and then we have this uh, while true loop where our motors are getting the reflected light intensity to follow the line. This is a proportional line follow because uh, this reflected light intensity, as it increases and decreases past 50, then our robot is going to compensate by steering in the right direction. Okay, this is pretty simple stuff. But uh, in order to create a limited line follow, uh, we're going to do a few changes. First of all, we're going to add a timer. And this timer is going to be used for when our robot is going to follow a line for a fixed amount of seconds. After that, we're going to uh, do our functions here. We're going to define a new function called line follow seconds. And our argument is the number of seconds that we want to follow the line. We're going to make sure that we reset the timer. That way, when we are calling this function, we always reset the timer back to zero. After that, we're going to use this same code that we did for uh, the line follow, but instead of while true, we're going to set the, uh, uh, the condition to be while the timer is less than the number of seconds. Uh, timer dot now. less than seconds. So while the timer is less than the number of seconds that we have uh, set in the, um, in the parameter over here, then we are following the line. But once it uh, meets the number of seconds, then we are exiting the loop and we stop the wheels. In order to run this code, it's very simple. All we have to do is go line follow seconds. And then if I wanted to follow the line for five seconds, I just put line follow seconds five. And there you have it. This is the simple function 
for following a line proportionally for a fixed number of seconds. So in order to create the second function, the uh, limited line follow using the wheel rotations, we're going to need to add a new variable for the right hand motor. Uh, the reason we do this is because when you set a motor pair, the left motor is rotating towards the negative direction and the right motor is rotating towards the positive direction. And this means that we can utilize this and uh, take advantage of this uh, motor rotation to calculate how many wheel spins we are making to follow the line. So here we're going to define our right motor. Right motor equals motor and we'll set it as A because we know that our A port is connected to our right motor. And then we're going to set our new function. So we're going to call it line follow degrees. And our parameters are the number of degrees that we want the right wheel to move when we are following the line. And then same thing as what we did before, instead of resetting the timer, we're going to reset our right motors uh, get degrees counted setting. So right motor dot set degrees counted and we'll set it as zero. Make sure that our set our default speed is accurate. And then we do the same thing as uh, what we did before. But inside our while loop condition, instead of checking the time, we're going to be uh, checking the degrees rolled on our right motor and check to make sure it is still smaller than the number of degrees that we set. So here we say right motor dot get degrees counted open and close bracket is less than the number of degrees. Then we keep following the light, um, I mean keep following the line and then stop the motor. To call the function is super simple. We just comment out the call for our line follow for seconds and then we put in line follow degrees and if we wanted to roll the wheel for two rotations then we put in 720 degrees. Finally, when we want to uh, follow the line until we encounter an obstacle with the distance sensor, uh, on Tricky you're going to need to modify the robot so that the distance sensor is actually facing towards the uh, color sensor. It's because uh, if we try to follow the line sensor backwards, it actually doesn't follow really well. So I suggest a very small way you can do it. So uh, with the Spike Prime robot, it's going to be fine because there's already a distance sensor facing forward. For Tricky, you're going to have to remove the uh, distance sensor and then put it uh, on the edge of these arms. So uh, I'll just demonstrate really quickly using the Spike Prime robot. So all you have to do is get the distance sensor put it on the front well the front of the robot and then uh, use these pins to secure it in place. Okay so this is just a very simple hack but uh, it's going to work and it's going to be perfectly fine to demonstrate the next part of my code. So for our final function, we're going to need to define our distance sensor. So here, distance sensor equals distance sensor with the capitals, and I've put mine at F. To define this function, we're going to go DEF line follow to object. 
and we don't need any parameters because uh, this is just going to follow the line until we reach an object. We're going to set our movement motors default speed to 20. And then I'm going to set a Boolean called object reached. The reason I need a Boolean is because I need some sort of flag to say that we are able to exit the while loop. So we're going to set object reach to false. So this is where we use the object reached uh, as a condition. So while object reached is equal to false, then we're going to do our uh, logic for our line follow. But we also need to set a new variable called distance. And this distance is going to store our uh, distance sensors reading because sometimes we get a none type error if we don't store this reading. So distance will equal distance sensor dot get distance in centimeters. And to get rid of the none type error, if the distance is equal to none, then we're going to set distance to 200. Oops, distance is 200. Okay, we're out dent again, and then we're going to check if we have reached the object. So if the distance is more than 20 centimeters, we're going to move our motors and use that proportional line follow. Else, we're going to set the flag that we've reached the object. And finally, once we exit out of this loop, we ask the movement motors to stop. Okay. It's a little bit more complex than the other two solutions, but it's also really fun to get working. To call it, it's very easy. All you have to do is uncomment, I mean, comment out this uh, line follow for degrees, and then we say line follow to object. And we don't have to add any parameters. And now the robot will follow the line until an obstacle reaches that 20 centimeter mark. That's it from me today. As you can see, line following is not that hard, but uh, when you have these functions, then uh, it's going to improve your coding and make your robot just that much more effective when it's completing its mission. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe for more in the future. Bye for now.